Hey guys, it's Shamsa and welcome back to my little kitchen. Today I'm sharing with you a popular Friday fakeaway. Donna kebab in a pitta made in an air fryer. Yes, two recipes in one and the pittas are also made in an air fryer. Now if you don't fancy making them then that's fine, you can buy shop bought ones. And I'm also throwing in two popular sauces that are served with the donna which is the garlic mayo and the chili sauce so watch right till the end to make this fake away meal in your air fryer now if you like the video please give it a thumbs up show your support by subscribing turning on that bell notification for all things cooking so let's start so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to begin by preparing our dough for our pitas and for that you need a bowl and I've got here one cup of water. This is 250 milliliters and the temperature of the water is important um, to start the activation for the yeast. And the temperature of the water has to be between 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. I'm going to be adding two teaspoons plus one quarter teaspoon of um, dried yeast and then half a teaspoon of sugar. And I'm also going to be adding in a quarter teaspoon of flour. Now I'm actually using 30% um, whole, whole grain flour and it's a mix of white and whole grain, but you can use just normal plain flour and you wanna whisk this together so all the ingredients combine. And then you want to take some cling film and just place that over nice and tight like that. And what I also like to do is take a clean tea towel and just place that over as well, just helps. And then just pop that into a warm spot and let that just sit for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And what will happen is with that yeast and the sugar will react with the water and it'll start the activation process and it'll become frothy on the top. And I'll show you how that looks once it's done. Right, so while we wait for the yeast to activate, we're gonna move on and we're gonna marinate our mince. Here I have 500 grams of lamb mince. This has 20% fat in it already. And into this, I'm going to go in with one teaspoon of paprika, oregano, and cumin powder. Half a teaspoon plus a quarter teaspoon of salt, which I'm adding in. I've got half a teaspoon plus a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. And I have here half a teaspoon of garlic granules. So just mix everything well and then just pop some cling film over like that and just pop that back into the fridge and just let that sit until it's needed. And now we're going to move on to our sauces, which I'm going to show you how to make. Right, we're going to start off by making the garlic mayonnaise first of all. Really simple and easy to make this. For that, you need one cup of, of shop-bought mayonnaise and I'm just going to add that straight into a bowl. And then we need two teaspoons of lemon juice. So I'm just gonna, one and two. A quarter teaspoon of salt goes in. Here I have half a teaspoon of dried oregano and black pepper, add that in as well. And now the fresh garlic. I've got here three cloves of fresh garlic, which I've diced. You can add as much or as little as you wish, but because this is garlic, mayonnaise it's that's what's going to give it that really nice garlicky flavor so I'm going to add that in as well and then just mix everything until it's combined and now the all important taste test try it and see if you want to add any more salt into this that is really good we like our sauce thick so I'm going to leave it at that if you want it slightly runnier you can dilute it by adding a little bit of water into that but just cover this now with cling film and just set that aside. And now we're gonna move on to our chili sauce. Right, for the chili sauce, all you need is a quarter cup of tomato ketchup. So we're just gonna add that in. I've got here two teaspoons of uh, Coleman's mint in vinegar. So pop that in as well. I've got here two teaspoons of um, malt vinegar distilled and I'm gonna add that in as well. And then, depending on how hot you like your chilli sauce, I have here uh, a quarter teaspoon of regular chilli powder. So add however much you want and then just give that a mix. And now what you want to do is you want to dilute this a little. So add however much water, probably added in about 
half a tablespoon to just to dilute it so it becomes a little runnier so this is personal preference you don't have to add the water in but i like my sauce slightly runnier just like this serve at takeaways and restaurants and i like it that consistency and there you have it your chili sauce is ready again just cover it and set it aside and now let's move on to making our pita breads right okay so it's been 15 minutes that the yeast and the sugar um, has been resting and let me just show you a clean film off and you can just see that it started to bubble there which is what we're looking for it's bubbling it's foamy and that's what we want now into this i'm going to add two tablespoons of oil just like that and mine is an olive oil blend you can use whatever neutral oil you wish i've got half a teaspoon of salt going in as well now i've got my flour here to show you and it is the same flour that i used before it's um plain flour with white and whole grain and all you need to do is just make sure you skim off the surface and because obviously we're using flour the cup measurement is in millilitres so this will roughly equate to 140 grams so we need two cups of flour so one cup in there so the second cup going in and now what you want to do is you want to take a wooden spoon like that and use the back end of a wooden spoon and just bring all of those ingredients together remove the spoon out and i've got my glove on and i'm gonna knead this now you can turn it over onto your counter and do it if you wish but i just like to do it in here and i'm gonna knead it for the next five minutes just to bring all of those ingredients together nicely and if the dough gets a little bit tacky you can add a little bit of flour and just keep kneading like that not too much right okay this is done just transfer this to a clean bowl while i'll go wash this one out right so let me just show you the dough if you can just touch it it's still a little bit tacky but it's soft and springy and that's what you want so i've washed the bowl out and into this i'm going to add half a tablespoon of oil just like that and then take my dough and just transfer it back and just roll it around and then turn it over as well so it's coated in the oil and now what you want to do is take the cling film that we used earlier pop it over and just wrap it tightly and what i always saw do as well is i use the same tea towel and i just cover it and then just set that aside to double in size so it could take anything between 30 to 60 minutes the door has doubled in size nicely and we are ready to form our pitters well doubles should i say so remove the cling film and then push the door down just punch it like that and then just transfer it like that onto the surface and just shape it a little so it just forms a circle and now we're going to cut out equal portions of our door so first of all we go in and half the door like that i just find it easy to do it like this and then half it again and then again like that so they form little triangles so they're all equal and then pick them up and you can either make the little door balls like this this is how i normally make them so place the door ball in the middle of your palm use your right hand to push the door from the edges over into the middle like that and this is how i normally form a door ball when i'm making chapatis and then you roll it over and you just cup the uh, door ball in the um, right hand and just move it around so we have a smooth bottom and that is what's going to help the pita breads puff up so i'm just going to pop them onto this board here that i've got and I'm going to continue making the rest of my dough balls. Now, if you can't do that method, the other method is just place them. Let me just move these out of the way. Place them onto the uh, surface like that. Cup it with your hand and just roll and keep doing that until the back of it is smooth. So you've got that there and perfect. And there we have it, all our dough balls are ready and all I'm going to do now is take the same tea towel that I had covering the dough 
earlier. Make sure that's wet. I've wrung out all the water out there. You don't want it too wet and just pop that over and just let this now rest for 10 minutes and then we'll be ready to form our pitters and make them. So I'll see you guys back in around 10 minutes time. Oh, totally forgot. Now would be a good time to take out the marinated mince from the fridge because you want it to come down to room temperature. So I'm just gonna go do that. Right, it's been 15 minutes. So let me lift this tea towel and show you how they look. They have doubled in size as well. And that's what we want. So I'm just gonna pop this to the side. Right, we're gonna start first of all by preheating our air fryer. And this step is crucial. Please don't skip this step because you want the basket of the air fryer to be at the correct temperature for when the pitters go in for them to puff up really nicely. So if you skip this step, your pitters won't cook properly and they won't puff up. So don't blame me. So I'm going to preheat this first of all at 200 degrees C and then I'll show you how to form your pitters and what to do next. Now, get your flour and make sure you dust your surface with plenty of flour like that. I've got my rolling pin here as well. And I'm gonna go in with the first dough ball here. Place that on top gently like that and make sure the rest of the dough balls are still covered with that damp tea towel because you don't want them to dry out. And all I want you to do is just turn that over in that dry flour and just move that to one side. And now you can roll this out however you want. I'm going to roll out the traditional pitter shape first of all for you guys to see. So it's slightly elongated and that is how it is. So roll it out to the size that you desire, which is probably going to be this. Again, make sure it fits into your air fryer basket as well. Right, okay, so the air fryer has preheated. So I'm just going to lift up my pitter and I'm just going to throw it in like that. So you can see, there it is. Close the basket quickly. And now we're going to cook this at 200 degrees C for three minutes. So let me just set the timer for that. And what you want to do is once it starts cooking, do not be tempted to open the air fryer basket. Do not try to attempt to turn the pita bread. It doesn't need it. Just allow it to cook and I'll show you how it looks in three minutes. And there we have it. The three minutes are up and you want to use an oven glove at this point because it is quite hot, but just look at that. How beautifully has that puffed up? And all you want to do is just gently remove that and then take a clean tea towel and just place them in the clean tea towel, as you can see here. Cover it and let it sit now until you've finished making the remaining batch. And there you have it, guys. All my pitters are ready. I'm just gonna cover them and just set them aside. And now we're gonna move on to cooking our donna. Right, so here is my mince that we took out the fridge earlier. I'm just gonna give it one final knead before we wrap this up in foil and then you want to take this and I've got myself a large piece of foil here and I'm going to place that in the middle and I'm just going to shape it like a sausage here. Make sure you leave some room here because you don't want it going to the edge and then you want to flip your foil over and you want to really tightly just roll this and make sure it's really nice and tight. And then what you want to do is the end that you've got here, you want to bring that to the top and take the edges, push down slightly and just turn them up like that on both sides because that will just stop any of that wonderful cooking juice that the uh, donna will release to escape. And then that is your donna meat ready to go into your air fryer. So the air fryer is already hot because I've just finished making the pita bread and all I'm going to do now is just gently add that in like that into the basket and we're going to cook this now for 30 minutes at 200 degrees C and I'm just going to set the timer for the air fryer and within that 30 minutes you don't need to turn it around, you don't need to move it, just let it cook and I'll show you how it looks once it's done in 30 minutes time. 
Right, okay, so it's been 30 minutes that the donut has been cooking away. It's finished. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out of the air fryer and I'm just going to place it on a plate and I'm just going to leave that to rest for 10 minutes before I open that up and show you how it looks. So see you guys back in 10 minutes. Right, so the donut meat has rested for 10 minutes and now I'm going to get my wonderful husband here to carve this because apparently he does a better job than me. So we're going to open this now on camera so you can have a look. So take it away please darling. You know my fingernails. <laughs> I've tasted this before and it is absolutely <gasps> gorgeous. Just look at that. Look at that juice. I know. And oh. that's that's what 10 minutes of resting does. It allows the meat to rest and can, for the juices to I be. Can have a plate please? You, would you like a fork as well to oh. hold on to it? Yes, I think that might. I can move that. Oh. Yes, it is very yeah. warm at the moment. There you are. Thank I'm going to, like, I'm just going to pop I'm the. Pick that up. Can you take that forward away please? Oh, hold on darling. Right, okay, how on, on the, can I put it on the plate? Yes, of course. Because oh, we're going to drizzle right. that wonderful yeah, and juice. Keep, keep the juice, guys. Over the uh, donut meat. So here goes. So, knife. And if I mess this up, Turn I'm it down. Sorry. It's the, the other way, other way. Does that or does that not look like Donna? There you go. Absolutely wonderful. I'm just going to try this little bit here. I love this as well. That's actually better than me shop, the donut shop. Mm. All that flavour's there. Mm. Can't wait to dig in later, but just look how juicy that is. If you haven't got a sharp knife, get a bread knife or a carving knife. Uh, the sharper the knife, the better. Right, let us cut this now <laughs> off camera and plate this up and show you guys how amazing this Bakerware meal in an air fryer is. 